all that good stuff that comes along with being a newlywed. And as time went on, uh, they were really excited to find out that she had was carrying a child. She was pregnant. And so they were really excited about going to have a baby. And so she got bigger, and she got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and back started hurting worse and worse, and uh, as some of you know. And uh, they had the baby. And they were very excited. Beautiful little baby. Little boy. And uh, they hugged it. They loved on it. They treated it like the most special thing in the world. As time went on, moms always kind of know when something's wrong. And mom knew something was wrong. Couldn't quite figure it out. What's that? Oh, it's great. And uh, couldn't figure it out. To finally realized that the baby was born blind. Okay? So the baby's blind, but they weren't gonna they were still gonna continue to love the baby. To hug on the baby, to, to nourish the baby and uh, be there for this little child. And so because that's what moms do, right? And so they, they were and that's what parents do is they love their kids, uh, no matter what. And so spent time bringing the kid, but sometimes uh, wow, kids can be mean, right? Yeah. Kids can be mean to each other and say things that they shouldn't say. And uh, so mom gets mad every once in a while because people stare. People don't actually want to become his friend because he's so much different than the rest of them. And now he's blind, but he has great ears. The great ears he can hear, and he can hear when people talk. And he grows up like that. He lives with his family, and not a lot of people really show a lot of interest in him just because he's different. It's awkward. He gets older, and at least in, in that time frame, if you were blind, there was nothing else that you could do for work, except beg. And so that's what he did. And he sat with a little cup, and he could hear when people were coming, and he rattled his cup. One day he heard some people coming, and it was a little bit different. And they stood there, and the guy started asking questions, rather than just drop a coin. And his disciples, they said, why, why is he like that? What's the cause of his dilemma? Is it because he did something, or is it because his parents did something? And she's just like, you got it all wrong. God wants to glorify himself through this man's life. And the guy's sitting there, and he's listening to all this. Because, I mean, his parents have felt bad for so long, because usually, if a child is born and it's not what some would say normal, then it's because mom and dad did something wrong. If I wouldn't have done this, or I wouldn't have done that. And, or, the other teaching was that if you were born with a problem, that you were going to do something in the future. And so because you were going to do something, you were being punished now. So that's what they grew up living and learning and knowing. And to have, to hear someone say, teacher, why is he like, he's like, he didn't do anything wrong. No one did anything wrong. But that God wants to be glorified in his life. This last week, I wasn't here, last week, because I was up at Next Camp. Okay? I was up at Next Camp and I was with uh, your niece and uh, nephews. Okay? Um, and I was so touched um, by the lives of those parents and those kids. And we talked about this very story. And we really kind of dug into it, but not too, not too deep so kids could get it. But I was so impressed with the way Jesus treated people in it. And I was so impressed in how he looked at people and thought like, wow, God wants to do a miracle in their life. God's going to do a miracle in their life. And I don't know if you read my Facebook post this morning, but uh, this we were playing this silly game. It was with those noodles that you float with. Okay, you know those noodles things. And we we're playing soccer with the noodles, but the soccer was a beach ball. And so you take the noodle and you whack the beach ball and try and get another goal. And so you know these kids are out there playing, and it's fun. 
I'm like, this is a dumb game, but this is fun. And they're pretty uh, serious. They want to win. <laughs> you know, we, our team was the unicorns, and so uh, we took our games and we held them like this, and we were chanting and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's cool to be a unicorn. <laughs> and so, but we're playing, and we were just getting demolished. I mean, absolutely. It, those kids, the other team, they scored all the time. And uh, little Michaela, she was on my hand the whole time. She was so afraid. Like, all these kids are out there, and she's just like, Hey, Dad, hey, Dad, you know, take me over here. And then she wanted that kid's noodle, and that kid's noodle. She wasn't happy with her noodle. And uh, she always wanted a different one. And so we run around together and stuff like that. Eventually, she was bold. She was strong, and she got off, and she was doing it herself, and... But she was cheating a little bit, being the younger one. She'd just go and grab the ball and start running with it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was cute. Anyway, uh, at one point I did fall down. Right? It was just kind of like, oh, I'm so tired. I just lay on the ground. And she came up to me and she's like, hey, man. You know, if you see her, she's got a face, this big smile. And, and I was like, yeah. She's like, are you okay? Oh, and I was like, oh, yeah. And she's like, can I help you up? And she puts her hand there and she... You know, lifts me up and I get up. And it was like, that's like the kingdom of God. And that's God. And meeting through people and being through people in their lives. Simple things. And you can meet God in lots of places. And so this guy, something happened within him that uh, he heard what Jesus was saying. That there was something about him that was important. And there was something about him that was special. And God wanted to do something special in his life. Doesn't that feel good? God thinks you're special, that you're important. And so of all things, of all things he starts to spit, I mean, it's, it's kind of rude and awkward and gross, but he starts to spit in the mud and the dirt and make some clay and mix it up and stick it in his eyes. Now, if you're going to like kill someone's sight, I think the last thing you did was put something in their eyeballs. Right? Like, this guy's going to see, and so let me just stick mud in there. Doesn't make sense. And so that's what he does, though. And he puts it on him, he's like, hey, go wash. In this pool called scent. So the guy goes off, it's a mile away. But he knows he's got a stick, and he knows how to get there, because he's been all around, and he's older now. And he just listens to what he said, and goes to wash, and Nick's, just picture the guy, he's like, I can see! I can see people! First time ever, he could see. And he could see trees. And he could see little kids. He never saw little kids before his whole life. And then he could go home and see his mom and dad who he's never seen. I mean, and see his friends that he's never seen. See where he sleeps. See what he's even wearing. First time. See the sky is blue. Amazing. That's what Jesus did. All the time. All the time. It's what he's always wanted to do. Do something special in people's lives. We get to the book of Revelation. And it's about God, you know, put up the scripture if you want. Uh, it's about, he's got these things he wants to tell everybody. Because he, he doesn't stop doing wonderful things. And he does a lot of things. And there's a lot of things I could talk about in the book of Revelation. And we could talk for a year or more about the details. But some real big things, you know, here's the revelation from Jesus, which God gave him to show his servants. So, uh, what must soon take place? He made known by sending his angel to his servant, John. Uh, next one. Uh, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. All right, just right there. So, this angel comes, and here's a message to God, and I want you to give it to people. All right? Because I'm not finished. Now, John, uh, this is about the year, uh, I'm trying to think of this. Uh, anyway, it was about the year 95 that John wrote this. All right, so this was like some 60 some years later after Christ was actually inserted. All right, at least. A long time. And so he's writing these things, and he's got stuff to say to the church. And one of the cool things that I see in it, and it starts off right away. And there's a lot you can glean from it, but if we go on to the next one, I think it's on there, maybe not. Let's see. No, it's... Okay. 
All right, let's stop there. All right, he first starts off talking about seven churches. I didn't stick it on there. But he's seven churches. He says, I'm standing in the middle of seven churches. And let me tell you something. And we've talked about this before, but the churches were not perfect. The people in them were not perfect ever. But he still associated himself with those people. And that's encouraging. Because no one has all their poop in a group. Right? No one does. Not one church ever has. Sorry, the little kids in the room. Hopefully I didn't get that. All right, so uh, they do have their stuff in a group, though, right? They wear diapers. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's no church ever had, but he associates himself with the church, with people that don't have it together. And they have some things that they've really done wrong, and they continue to do wrong, and they leave their first love, and they do all these things, and they become legalistic, and they have this whole mess of life that they live, and then, but he's like, I'm there. I'm there. Hang on, and you'll receive life. Over and over and over and over again. Okay? That's good. That's great. I mean, we can talk about the seven seals and the seven trumpets and the seven, 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 seven. Which, you know, we talk about all those things. The idea is that it's about Christ and his perfection and what he's trying to do through us and do for the church. The book of Revelation is about Christ kind of like all throughout his church. Throughout from the time of... Wow. Well, it actually goes from the beginning of time, but essentially from the time of uh, the start of the new church until the end. That's what he's talking about. His interaction with it. And he says... And you, you know this through your own life. The adversary comes and there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be stuff. There's always going to be bad things that happen. Always. But I win. But I win. And I hope you can say, but I win. I may have it all together, but because he wins, you win. That's the whole book. Because he wins, he's victorious, he's the lamb, he's the one that all the 24 elders are around. He's the one that has all this worship going on, he's the center of everything throughout the whole book. He's like, and I win. I win and I'm coming to get you. At some point. 